welcome to the Holy Land and this biblical site of Bethlehem. Now right now we're just in the outskirts of Bethlehem, in the fields and in the pastures, in the places where the shepherds uh, would have been. So in this video we want to talk about David and the Psalms because it's right here in this area where David uh, grew up, probably he was born, he grew up and he pastured and led his sheep in this particular area here. Also, this is the area where Ruth and Boaz would have met, where Boaz had uh, pastures down here. So we're right in the area here. We've, we've looked at the land, the lay of the land, and we can see that this is kind of the flat area. Uh, so we can see that in the outskirts is where David probably would have uh, led his sheep as he pastured his sheep. So in this video, we want to talk a little bit about the 23rd Psalm and David, because this is the area where David spent his time uh, probably writing many of the psalms, learning how to sing, learning how to throw a sling. Uh, this is all where it happened, right here in this area, just in the outskirts of Bethlehem. So, it says in Psalm 23, and this is one of the most beautiful psalms that we have, it talks about shepherding. And David was a shepherd, and David is the one who wrote the 23rd Psalm. So it says this, it says in Psalm 23, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now David, David was a shepherd, so he understood what a shepherd meant, and he used the terminology of a shepherd to talk about how the Lord is our shepherd. So he understood it very well. Uh, a shepherding also was the least sought after job of any job that there was. It was the lowliest position because you're out uh, alone, all day long uh, with these sheep and it's just a very lonely uh, job and there's nothing really to do it's extremely boring but David took advantage of his lonely uh, alone time he learned how to sing he learned how to play a harp he learned how to write uh, and he wrote many psalms probably right here in this area or when he did write them he reflected back on his childhood and youthful days as being a shepherd in these in these hills and this area right here that you can see in this video David says, the Lord is our shepherd, and he will provide for our needs, both physically and spiritually. And then it says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. Now there's a difference between green pastures and the hillside. We can see here in this plain right here outside of Bethlehem, this is more of the pasture. And it's a little bit green. We've got some rain here, but not much. But the hillside was for the shepherds. But the uh, grass, the, the lowland was for, it was the green pasture, so to speak. But the shepherds really they didn't take their sheep in the green pastures because that was the farming area. They had to take them on the hillside. So they would lead their sheep to the green pastures on the hillsides. And I can see green pastures here on the hillside because we've just gotten some rain here in Israel. Now interestingly, in this text, it says that God leads us in green pastures. So normally the shepherds wouldn't have their sheep in the pastures where the farmland was. But in this situation, God does lead us in, in green pastures. So he gives us the best land, leads us in the pastures where the best uh, grass is. So he, in essence, does something totally different than what a normal shepherd would do. And he provides the best for us. So it says, he leads me and he makes me lie down in green pastures. And then it says, he leads me beside still waters. So God being our shepherd, like David being a shepherd, he would lead his sheep to still waters. And to a desert shepherd caring for his sheep, water was more important than food and was life itself. So these waters in the desert were accessible and peaceful and they gave new life. And that's what God does for us. He leads us in green pastures. He leads us beside still waters he restores us and God does the same for us he, re he refreshes us he sustains our soul he gives us new life God is the water of life Christ referred to himself as the water of life and like I say to a desert person uh, water was their life they understood that concept so clearly and then it says he restores my soul he gives me a new strength he gives me back a new life so all these uh, green pastures, the waters, the still waters that we partake of that are speaking of spiritual food, uh, speaking, speaking of what God does for us, they restore our soul. So it's interesting that uh, God's Word is referred to as food, 
So as we read God's Word, as we spend time with God in prayer, God restores our soul. And that's how He does it. He restores our souls by His Word, by His presence, by our prayer, by His comfort. And uh, so He is restoring our soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. And the paths on the hillside that you can see here, there's different kinds of paths. Some are treacherous. They go down into ravines. And we can, I can see some ravines over here that are very treacherous. And a shepherd wouldn't lead his sheep there. Uh, he would lead them in the safe paths. And in the same way, God leads us in the safe paths. He does not want us to go in the paths of darkness, the, the paths that lead to sin, the paths of deceit. God leads us in the good, healthy paths as we follow Him and His Word. And then it says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So I can see, once again, I can see a ravine right over there that maybe David referred to. It's a deep valley, and it's dark, and it's pretty treacherous. treacherous. And so I'm sure David looked at that, and he said, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. I'm not alone that wherever I'm at, whatever problem I have in life, God is with me. And He is the one who uh, comforts me, and He is the one who helps me, even in the dark, deep times of my life. And then it says, And you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. And David probably thought to the time when, when he was a soldier, and how and, and he was fleeing from Saul, and how even in the midst of that, God pre provided for him like a table in the midst of his enemies. And God does the same for us. Even though we might have enemies, we might have the world that's against us. We might have Satan. God still gives us a banquet. He gives us His Word, gives us His presence, gives us other believers, gives us the church, gives us a hope, gives us a future. Uh, so in the midst of our problems and our darkness, and in the midst of our enemies, God prepares a table for us. And we should keep our eyes on the table and not on, on all the problems and, and uh, the darkness of life. And then it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So this speaks of how God wants to bless us. He wants to help us in all that we do. So the goodness of God, His desire is to bless us all the days of our life. And to dwell in the house of the Lord forever, uh, what a hope that we have in Christ. So I hope that you've enjoyed watching this video. It's really special to be here. and. As I look out over this area, I see the Judean um, wilderness in the background. I see the Dead Sea behind me. I see the, uh, the deep ravine that David probably referred to in the valley of the shadow of death. And I can just imagine David as a boy uh, wandering around here. I can imagine him playing in the fields. I can imagine him leading his sheep on the, on the paths, on the hillsides over here. I can just imagine him spending countless days alone where he learned how to uh, write, he bettered his skills, he learned how to sing, he learned how to throw a, a, a sling, he probably uh, wrote some of the psalms or what he did write reflected back to those. And I'm thinking of, of how David didn't waste his time being alone, he developed his skills and how we should do the same. We should develop our skills in times of barrenness and times of loneliness and times of, of boredom, so to speak, rather than always having to be occupied. We should develop the skill of knowing God's Word, of developing the skills of being able to share Christ, just uh, developing musical instruments, just different abilities to be able to be a better servant uh, for God. So I'm just really rejoicing and really con contemplative here uh, this morning as I, I look out over this, uh, this area uh, where David uh, lived and um, and led his sheep. So anyway, I hope that you have enjoyed uh, this video. Uh, God bless you and thanks for watching.